Hallelujah. Tonight we shall be concluding on our series of teachings titled Greater Works Than This. Greater Works Than This. Our anchor scripture is from the book of John chapter 14 verse 12. John chapter 14 verse 12. The Bible says, Very, very, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Tonight, we want to take one step further and look at the topic, boldness for greater works. Boldness for greater works. My anchor scripture tonight is from the book of John chapter 5. Read the first nine verses. John chapter 5, read the first nine verses. The Bible says, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the street market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, Neither waiting for the moving of the water. So an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity in thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lying and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. When we talk about the works that Jesus did, one of the common principles in all of his miracles was boldness. One common theme as you read through scriptures and study the miracles of Jesus and even the lifestyle of Jesus, you will always see boldness in it. Friends, it takes boldness to do the works that Jesus did. And it takes boldness to even do greater works. We need to be bold. We need to be courageous. In the scripture we just read, we see how Jesus healed a man who has been lying down for 38 years just by speaking to him. He didn't touch him. He didn't, you know, assist him, he just spoke to him, and his words, the bold and authoritative words of Christ, made that miracle possible. Furthermore, Jesus did that against the, 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 um, the, 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 the principles, the, the laws, rather, of the people. Because according to them, according to the Jews, no one is supposed to do anything on the Sabbath. No one was supposed to do anything on the Sabbath. In fact, up to today in Israel, they still observe the Sabbath. But Jesus took a bold step to go ahead and heal this man despite the rules. Friends, 
it's important to understand that without boldness, you cannot do greater works. If Jesus did the works he did with boldness, we need what I can call even a higher degree of boldness to do greater works. So tonight, we're going to be looking at this particular miracle that Jesus did in John chapter 5 as it relates to us as a church. Over the last two weeks, we have been blessed by God to bring two of his anointed servants to bless us. And it's important to know that that divine appointment, that divine arrangement is synonymous to what we just read of here in John chapter 5. There are seasons and there are certain seasons. The Bible tells us that the angel of the Lord at a certain season, verse 4, for the angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Please note that it was not at all times. It was a certain season. And that season was annual. Likewise, we have not received the ministry of so many people. In fact, perhaps this year, this was the first set of ministers that have come to be a blessing to us as a church. This year, not because we don't believe in having people come to bless us, but that's just the way God has arranged it. So this is that certain season and I want to bring our awareness and consciousness to the fact that this season there's been a stirring of the water. Therefore, we must be sensitive to know what to do in this season. I was speaking to one of our brothers yesterday and I said to him, I'm glad you are doing something in this season because it tells me you are sensitive to the standing of the water that has happened in this church. Many people are professional conference attenders. Many people like the emotions that comes out of services. They never plan to take an action after any service. No wonder we have the caliber of Christians that we have today. Every message should give you an action that will move your life forward. You shouldn't listen to any message or attend any conference without having something to do right after the conference. Glory be to God in the House of Light Assembly. We are not breathing regular Christians. We are breeding Christians who after every revival, after every service, after every program, put their hand to the plow, not looking back. Tonight, I want to show you the season that we are in so that the adventure, after the prophetic visit and the apostolic visit, you have not done anything with your life. You have not done anything with yourself. The anointing, all the amen, all the shouting and prayer and screaming and the prophetic word that has come upon you just by adventure, you have not done anything with it. Come as a messenger of the Lord to quicken you tonight to action. Remember, the Bible says, Who when the angel stirs the pool, whosoever first jumps into it is made healed. Is healed of whatever infirmity that he had. Let's look at this season that we are in because it's critical to understand that these two ministers of God didn't just come. And they didn't just come 
back to back. They have come at a certain season. We are in that season. And I want every one of us to maximize it. So let me show you what seven things that this season means so that you can start taking some actions in this season. And I tell you, your life will never remain the same again. Number one, when the angel stares the pool, like we just had these two angels of the Lord visit us, it is a divine signal to break king through limits and barriers. It's a divine signal. You may not have heard from God, you may not have seen a vision or dreamt, but there are signs and signals if you are sensitive in the realm of the spirit that will let you know that there has been a staring of the pool. It's a divine signal to break in through limits and barriers. That is to say the things that have held you before, the failures of the past, the things that have stopped you before can no longer stop you in this season. The things that have held you down can no longer hold you down because the water has been stirred. It is a divine signal to break in through limits and barriers. In the name of Jesus, you are breaking through limits and barriers today. Everything that has held you down will lose its grip over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 35, verse 3 to 5. Isaiah chapter 35. Verse 3 to 5. The Bible says, Strengthen ye the feeble hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that have a fearful heart, Be strong! Fear not! Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, He will come and save you. Then He went ahead. <laughs> he says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. And a Patch ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where shall each where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. The barriers, the limits are broken when the pool is there. So go and try again. Go and apply again. Young man, go and approach that lady again. Because the limits and the barriers have been broken by the action of the standing of the world. In the name of Jesus, you will no longer be held down again. Number two, we're moving very quickly. The standing of the water. Signal the season to be the first to try something different. It signals the season to be the first to try something different. To go beyond your comfort zone. That's the certain season that we're in right now. The season to dare to try something different, to be the first in your family, on your job, in your community, in your generation. The time to be the first to try something different. 
According to that scripture, we, we started with in John chapter 5, the Bible says that whosoever then first, verse 4, after the troubling of the water, whoever is the first, whether he was impotent or blind or halt or withered, Whoever was the first to start something will be successful. It's a season to be the first to try something different. So we are in the season of dreaming big, making big moves, taking, taking giant steps, daring the impossible. It's a season. To leave your comfort zone. You have stayed so long around this mountain. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. And hallelujah. The pool has been stared. It's time for you to stand up and fight like man, like men, and, 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 and destroy every glass ceiling over your life. Be the first to try something new in your family, in your home, in your nation. Try something new. Dream big. Express your vision. Go forward. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19, the Bible says, Behold, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. It's a season of new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? It's a new thing. They will be used to the wilderness. God is saying, I will do a way, a way. You've never seen it before. And springs of water in the desert. A river, Father, in the desert. It's time to start something new, something different, something great, something of global impact. The season you have been waiting for is now. I don't know if there will ever be this season again. A new season and a great season will come, but make the best of this season. It's the season of the stand of the water. The man at the pool of Bethesda did not know this. So he was not always the first. Whosoever was the first. Can you be the first to dream big? Can you be the first to start something new? Yes, you can. And this is the right time for it. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Number three, the study of the water signals a season of instant miracles and testimonies. In the name of Jesus, this shall be our experience at Tola from today. The ushering of a season of instant miracles and testimonies. One of the ways to enjoy life is to understand the times and the seasons. One of the ways not to struggle in life is to understand what is relevant for each season. To have an understanding, just like in 1 Chronicles 12, verse 32, the sons of Issachar. Very small tribe of about 200 men were ahead, had an advantage over the entire nation of Israel. We are told there were about 2 million men, 2 to 3 million men at that time. A small tribe of about 200 men were always in the ruling class just because they understood the times and seasons. 
Can I employ you? Can I ask you to activate your faith for instant miracles and testimonies? Even as the word of God is going now, there shall be instant miracles, instant testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive your miracle, receive your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He's telling us that we are now in the season of instant miracles, instant healing. When the pool is dead, when the angel of the Lord stirred the pool, whosoever first jumped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Immediately, instantly, Your miracle will no longer be delayed. Yeah. We are in a season of instant miracles. And I want you to believe it. God will not be greater tomorrow than he is today. What God can do tomorrow, he can do today. So you don't have to postpone or procrastinate. You don't have to settle for tomorrow for your miracle. I love the story of the woman in Luke chapter 18. How she troubled the judge to have to receive her vengeance. Luke chapter 18, from verse 1. The Bible says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying. There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither did God it man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but after all, he said unto himself, So I fear not God, nor regard man. Yet, because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her. Least by her continual coming, she weary me. This was a woman that would never take no for an answer. This was a woman that wanted the, the answer now and will not stop until the answer came. We are in a season of instant testimonies, instant miracles. But the ball is in your courts. If you tap into it, you will testify of it. It is my prayer that in this season, none of us will sleep off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number four, the stirring of the water is a time to receive the courage to go all the way in our line of purpose and destiny. It is the time of courage to proceed further, to go deeper into the pool, to climb higher on the ladder of success. It is a time to go all the way into the line, in our line of purpose and destiny, to dig deeper. Grace has been released because when the angel stands the pool, the blind man all of a sudden receives strength. The main, the hearts, the impotence, the wither, all of them immediately. Grace is released to run, to pursue, to strive, to get into the pool. When the angels get the water, I can believe that nobody was ready to announce to anybody. Every man was for himself. The pool has been stirred to in the last couple of days. It's time to press in. 
has God called you into any area of life, it's time to go deeper. Don't be shallow. Don't stay at the surface. Don't be ordinary. It's time to be extraordinary. It's time to take it to the next level. It's time to speed up. It's time to press in. It's time to take up with the vision. You have been waiting and praying. Lord, when should I start? When should I do this? I have great news for you. The time is now. God is saying the time is now to start that business, to write that curriculum, to do that great thing. It's time to go all the way in your line of purpose. You've been called into ministry, it's time to go deeper. You've been called into fashion, into academics, into athletics, into sports, into entertainment. Whatever it is God has called you to, the pool has been stirred. Grace has been released. Do not take the grace of God for granted. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. But he said, the grace that was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Yet I labored more abundantly. 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I live more abundantly than they are. Yet not I. But the grace of God which was with me. This grace has been released. It's time to labor in your line of calling. To labor in the line of purpose that God has called you to. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will run to win the prize. You will run and you will win the prize in the name of Jesus Christ. It's time to take courage. You don't know how the blind can tell that the angel has come. You don't know how the lame, the impotence, the hawk don't know how they can compete with each other. When all the multitudes of people were there, don't know how they did it. But I know grace was available unto all. They all had grace, divine enablement to approach the pool. To approach the pool. But only whoever first got there was healed. So we must run to win the prize. We must not labor as one that beats the air. We must run as one who is ready. Who's running for a purpose, running for a reason, running to win, not running to try. Laboring to win, not laboring to test. In the name of Jesus, you and I will go far. We will climb higher in the mighty name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14. The Bible says, and this is Paul the Apostle, he says, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press, 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 I press. Oh, if I look at verse 13, the first before the verse before that, it says, Brethren, I can't touch myself to have apprehended. That means I may have done some things before. But it's time for greater works. <laughs> I love that. Not myself, not have apprehended. But this one's like him. Forgetting those things which are behind, 
and reaching forth unto those things which are before, press toward the mark and the prize, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We have been doing some works before. Now the pool has been scared. Time for greater works. It's time for greater works. That's grace of God upon your life, the grace that has been released will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Number one now, number five, the state of the water is a time to take bold actions in spite of the limitations that you may have. You see, I've always wondered why the angel decided to stir the water instead of touching everyone that needed healing. Why did he make them go through that stress? You are there. You carry the healing virtue. We know you have the healing virtue because you deposited it in the water. Why didn't you just spread it across? But I learned something from that scripture. That God wants us to move forward in spite of the limitations that we have. That's why Jesus will heal a blind man, put some spit on the, on the floor, put the mud on his eyes, and ask him to go and wash. Walk blind with something covering your eyes. Walk that way. Hmm. In spite of that disadvantage, walk, 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 and go and wash yourself. So we must, this is a time to take bold actions. Nothing may have changed in you physically. In fact, nothing may have changed within, with you situation, situationally. But you have to take a bold action in spite of the limitation. The blind still had to run to the pool. The impotent still had to run to the pool. Everybody carried their limitations with them, carried their weaknesses with them, carried their disabilities with them, and ran towards the pool. It's a time to take a bold step. In front, in front of the oppressor, you know, when the angel stands up the pool, that was the time when nobody was the friend of anybody. That was when your friend was now your competitor. It was not a time for group activity. When the angel stares the pool, every man was for himself. Call your weaknesses. Oh, Jesus said, come to me, all you that labor. Come with your labor. Come with your heavy leather. Still come. In, in the face of that weakness, in the face of the enemy, the oppressor, come. And I will give you rest. So when the water is there, is the time to take a bold action in the face of the oppressor or in the face of limitation. I love what David said in Psalm 23, verse 5. It says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So when the man gets healed, when one man gets healed, every person that didn't get healed are his enemies. But there's nothing they can do about it. Gets healed and he leaves them there. So I want you to determine to be that man who will do something with the anointing you received, the grace that has been released. So that the world will envy you. The name of Jesus, that will be our experience in total from today. In Jesus' name. Number six, 
It is the time to take bold attempts despite past failures. Mm. It's time to try again even if you have failed before. This man who has been there for 38 years knows something about trying again. Because he tried again for at least 38 times. When the water is stirred, even if you have jumped in the pool before and you didn't get healed, you get a second chance or a third chance or a fourth chance or a 20th chance. It's time to attempt certain things despite past failures. Failure is not an end to him who is born of God. It's a step into greatness. It's a leap forward. So when the water is there like this, it's time to try again. You may have failed before. You may have just failed. But the difference is that the water has been stirred. In Job chapter 14, verse 7 to 9, this scripture gives me a lot of encouragement every time I read it. Job chapter 14, verse 7 to 9, the Bible says, For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Through the root of all the roots thereof, what's holding the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will burn and bring forth bough like a plant. There is hope for you. You can succeed. You will succeed. You will make it. God's word has comfort. The angels of the Lord have come to stir the pool. It's time to try again. In spite of your past failures, don't let your failures define you. Failure is an event, not a person. You are not a failure. You may have failed, but you are not a failure. When God created you from the beginning, he said everything about you was good. Failure is not good. So you are not failure. Failure is not you. You are not a failure. You might not be good at certain things, but you are not a failure. You may not be good enough for certain people, but you are still not a failure. You may not be competent in doing certain things right now, but that doesn't make you a failure. Maybe you are not old enough, or you are not wise enough, or you are not strong enough. That doesn't mean you are a failure. God does not create failures. God does not create feelings. He creates people in his image and his likeness. So if God cannot fail, God does not fail. Therefore, everyone created in his image and his likeness are not failures. The mighty name of Jesus, everyone with that label of failure, you are set free tonight. Everyone who the world has called failure, God is giving you a new name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When the pool is dead, it's a time to attempt great feats, even if you failed at it before. It's not over until you win. It's not over until you win.
And in Jesus' name, you and I shall win in Jesus' name. Finally, number seven. When the pool is dead, it's time to start listening to the instructions of the Holy Spirit. It's time to receive instructions from the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Lord is upon many waters. No shatter. When that water is stirred, the voice of the Lord will proceed forth. It's a time to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Ghost and to move with that voice. Don't just shout, amen, cry, jump, you know, wave your hands during the service. Listen and be sensitive after the Spirit will speak. He will tell you certain things to do. Once you begin to do it, your life will never remain the same. This is how to benefit from any conference. Go back. Go with the notes. Go and settle with God. You will hear his voice. Because not everybody does that. They jump, they shout, they cry, they scream, they are excited. And they come back the next, next year. <laughs> I told them something at one of my jobs. I said, there is no way I will be at this job for 10 years, 30 years without being the CEO. Never. <laughs> Never. Because there are many people who are like that man. 13 years, they are still there. Waiting for a man. When you can hear the voice of God and move ahead. There's no way. No way. There's no way. I can give 10 years of service to one company, one man's company, and not be the CEO. No way. Because I understand that I'm a child of God. When I go to programs like this, when I have encounters like this where the pool has been stirred, I will hear a word behind me saying, this is the way of working it. And that word will lead me to my high places. I know that for sure. So after the pull has been stirred, pay attention to the voice of the Spirit of God. God spoke to Abraham and Abraham took an instant step. And that step made him a generational greatness. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. Make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And verse 4. So Abraham departed. The Lord has spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Abraham departed. God spoke to him. He acted on it. And that was the beginning of the greatness of his life. The pull has been stirred. Are you sensitive to hear anything from God? Or have you even forgotten that something happened? <laughs> you know? Some people have forgotten that something happened. Some people have, have moved on. They are waiting for another revival. They are waiting for another conference. Why they have not received the fullness of what God did at that conference? Please, let's stop religion. Let's start spirituality. When the pool is stirred, it's time to start paying attention. You know the way God speaks to you now. You know. 
You know, some of you is in dreams, some of you is through the word, some of you is through prophets, some of you is through signs, some of you is audible, some of you you see, some of you you see when you pray, some of you you see when you sing, some of you you see when you... Different ways, when you study the Bible, when God speaks to you, just be ready to receive, because... God does not call the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Tonight, as we start to close in this teaching, I want to encourage you to do something with the words and the encounter from the Lord that you have received. Great works takes boldness. And greater works takes even a higher level of points. Stop bravado. It is boldness of your status in Christ Jesus. You don't have to be braggadocious. You have to be bold. Because now you know the pool has been stirred. Something about your life must change. No angel carried any of those people into the pool. Every man carried himself. So God is not going to do these things for you. You have to do it yourself. This is the season. This is the certain season. Don't wait for next year. Don't wait for next year. It's like going for... <laughs> it's like going for a uh, singles conference as a single man. You've gone there for 10 years. You are still single. You have a big problem. <laughs> You've been going there for 10 years as a single lady. Singles conference. I don't want singles conference. And you are, not, you are still single. Wow. You are a senior man. Yeah, that's why you hear from somebody said in the studio here. Yeah? You are no longer a bachelor, you are now a man cello. <laughs> you must do something different. You must do something quick. You must do something now. So pull out this step. Don't wait for next women's conference. Don't wait for the next time we have an apostolic visit. Do something with the one you just had. Go and dream big. Be the first to start something in your family. You know there are certain things that people have said, ah, in our family, we don't do that. There's nobody that has done that in our family. Well, this is the time now for you to do that. Maybe in your family, nobody has gone to college. Or nobody has a doctorate degree. Or nobody buys a car. Or nobody buys a new car. Or their car, they are buying a demon car. Do something. Do something different. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. As you stand to do something, the Lord will support you. You won't fall back. You won't fall down in the name of Jesus Christ. Those lepers said, why sit we here until we die? If we sit here, we die. If we go into the city, they may catch us and kill us. Let's just go. Let's just go. And they went. And they did not die. Esther said, pray for me. I'm going before the king. I know I don't have an invitation. But if I perish, and she, don't, she didn't perish. Those who dare circumstances don't perish. Those who dare to do great things after the pool has been stirred, after grace has been released, they don't perish. Esther asked them to fast for her for three days. That was the way to end to to, to stir the pool of grace. Please do something. Do it quickly. Go and revisit those books 
of great dreams that you have, start looking at the ones you can implement quickly. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads as we give God thanks for his word tonight. Father, we thank you for your word that you have sent to us tonight. Lord, we ask for the grace to do something because of the words we have received tonight. Let grace be released upon everyone who desires and determines and puts the hand onto the plow in the name of Jesus. Bless us and bless the works of our hands. Let it be well with all of us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we close tonight, I want to give an opportunity to everyone or anyone under the sound of my voice who is yet to be saved. If you are not a child of God, you are not saved. If you are not born again, you are not saved. If you don't belong to Jesus, you are not saved. If you don't live right with Christ, you are not saved. But you can make a decision now that can guarantee your safety. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Don't be deceived. We are in the last days. If you don't belong to Jesus, you are not saved. You are not saved physically. You are not saved spiritually. You are not saved financially. You don't have any kind of safety. But once you come to Jesus, your safety is guaranteed. Tonight, if you are under the sound of my voice and you would like to come to Jesus, the process is easy. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, the Lordship of Jesus, you shall be saved. Therefore, if you are ready, God is ready. So please bow your head and close your eyes and say this prayer of faith after me. I want to pray for anyone who is yet to be saved or those who may have backslidden from what God has called them to. Those who are backslidden from living right for the Lord. Those who are backslidden from following and seeking after Jesus. If you're in any of these categories, please bow your head, close your eyes, and say this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight just the way I am. I am a sinner, and I know that you are the Savior. Please forgive me of my sins and forgive me of my sins and wash me with your blood and make me your child again. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I know that I'm saved I'm born again now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for these ones who have come to you tonight. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 11, it says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him, shall not be ashamed. Lord, these ones have believed in you and confessed you as their Lord and Savior. And therefore, I ask that you take away shame from their lives. Take away fear from their lives. Take away insecurities mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring mm -hmm. the grace that brought them forward tonight to keep them in Christ all the days of their lives. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. And on the last day, when you come to take us on home, may our garment be white as snow, may no iniquity be found in us, may we remain ready and not trouble with thee, our Father. Thank you, most high God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Glory be to God. If you said that prayer, congratulations. You are now saved. You are now born again. And you are now a child of God. So please reach out to us and let us know you made this informed decision. You can send us a message on any of our social media platforms. Or you can send us an email at newbirth at tola.org. Newbirth at tola.org. We'd like to hear from you so we can bring you in and take you through a discipleship class in Jesus' name. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our voice again and say thank you to Jesus. If you have received anything from the Lord tonight, just thank him. Bless his name. Thank him for the grace he has given to you to walk, to run, to leap, and to praise the Lord. Thank him for the grace. He said, by my God, I can walk through a troop. I can leap over walls. Thank him for the word that has come today to move us forward, to take us higher, to take us deeper in the love of God and in the greater works of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you once again for the miracle of your word. Thank you for this new wine that you have kept till now. It is a sweet wine. Help us to do something with what we have heard tonight. And let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. As we close tonight, please remind, remember that we're going to be having our power and breakthrough night on Saturday morning, Saturday the 1st of uh, September. 31st, I'm sorry, the 31st of August. Okay, it's in the morning, all right? The 31st of August at 2 a.m. We're going to be praying for about two hours by the grace of God. So don't miss it. It shall be the crowning part of the blessings of the Lord for us in this month of August in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Also, don't forget our weekend. Uh, uh, there will be no weekend family breakfast prayer on that Saturday morning because we're going to be praying earlier in the morning. But by the grace of God, come September 1, September 1 will be our activate service, our anointing service. And it shall be at 10 a.m. in the sanctuary. Please don't miss that for anything. It's only once a month. We miss that one. You have to wait another 30 days. But why wait? 